let's take a look at this in action. So let's jump on some routers and make it happen. We're going to open up PuTTY, and I've set up SSH on the router. SSH is a lot faster to use in contrast to using the rollover cable. And oftentimes, in a workplace environment, you're very rarely sitting right next to a router, unless it's broken or you're putting the initial configuration on it. Typically, when we're accessing routers, we're accessing it over the data network. So in this case, we're going to use SSH to access our router. So we have 192.168.10.1 is the IP address of that router. I'll log in, go to privilege mode, and uh, then what we can do is I'll do a couple things. Let's do a show IP Show IP route first. Wow, I, my fingers are fat today. So if we do show IP route, right now I just have the base configuration on this router. We see two static routes. I have 192.168.10.0 slash 24, which is directly connected to fast ethernet 00. This is where my PC is hooked up to. And then I have 10.65.16.0 slash 30, which is directly connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 1. So that's the connection link between my two routers. But I have no static routes on here right now. Well, let's go take a look at router 2. So I'll open up another party window. This time I'm going to SSH to router 2, which is 10.65.16.2. I'll log in, go to privilege mode, and do a show run. Now the reason... That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a show IP route. I guess my fingers are fat this morning. Let's make this bigger and take a look at the routes on our router. Now, I have not yet configured the loopback interfaces on router 2, but I did configure a static route to point back to 192.168.10.0 slash 24 going to 10.65.16.1. So if you have that drawing in front of you of our network diagram that we're going to configure here, you'll see that router 2 has a route pointing back to my workstation, which points to router 1's IP address of 10.65.16.1. So what we want to do is we want to set up our loopback interfaces now. So to set up our loopback interfaces, let's go into configuration mode. So we'll go config T. And to set up a loopback interface, we type in interface, and then loopback. And then we give it a number. If I hit question mark here to find out what number I can give it, I can give it a number between 1 and, it looks like, 2,147,000, oh my gosh, 2,147,483,647 loopbacks. So we're going to have a whole stack of loopback interfaces on our router. We won't ever use 2 billion loopbacks. We may actually crash the router if we do that. However, it's giving us the opportunity to set a value for that loopback name, so to speak, to be any number between that range. I'm going to set up the first loopback as loopback 0. So interface, loopback 0. And what that will do is it will change my prompt again. It creates interface loopback 0 and it allows me to put an IP address on it then. So now I can specify the IP address that I want, 10.65.0.1, and my mask is 255.255.255.0. I'll issue no shutdown as well to make sure the interface goes to an up state. Now I've created interface loopback 0. I can do a show run, excuse me, do a show IP route. And when I do my show IP route now, now we see that I have 10.65.0.0 slash 24 directly connected to loopback 0. Sometimes this will show up in your routing table as 10.65.0.1 slash 32 when it is connected to a loopback. It depends on the version of iOS you are currently running. This particular version gives me the whole network address that I've configured on loopback 0. Other versions only give me a slash 32 to identify that it is a loopback, it can only have one host on it. Okay, so let's configure the rest of our loopbacks. So, int loopback1, that has an IP address of 10.65.1.0, excuse me, 10.65.1.1, no shut, and 
we can take shortcuts here as you're seeing me do more and more. INTL2, right? We can shorten up interface loopback2 into INTL2. And that will create interface loopback2. So we do IP address here, 10.65.2.1. And no shut. And last interface, INTL3. Now notice I didn't even back out of my config prompt at interface. So I typed INTL3 here, and I didn't type exit beforehand. I'm now configuring interface loopback3. So there's, there are some shortcuts you can take without having to go back a step as well. So interface loopback3. It's going to have 10.65.3.1. And no shut. So let's exit out of here and do a show IP route. You may have noticed that when we're in SSH, we're no longer getting the log messages from a router displaying on our screen. The reason for that is that when we're connected via the rollover cable through the console port, we're in the true terminal of the router. When we're in the true terminal of the router, by default, the router will display all of those messages. They're called monitor messages. It will display all those monitor messages at us. If we want to watch that while we're in an SSH session, we actually have to type the command terminal monitor. So now whenever a log message comes up, it actually displays it for us. That happens when we do config T, right? If we exit config T, it says somebody just configured from this interface, right? So when we do terminal monitor, it then puts those messages back on our screen. If we want them to display along with the command prompt in a very nice way, we're going to have to go into line VTY. Let's do that. We'll just do it instead of telling you about it, right? So if we want it to display nicely where it allows us to keep typing while those messages come up and not interrupt our prompt, I would need to do line VTY 0 through 4 and then do logging synchronous. And now when I exit and I start typing that command and my message comes up here, the command that I start typing before my logging message came up remains afterward. So at any rate, I'm going to say no terminal monitor here. No terminal. Oh, it must not let me do that. We'll find out. So I type terminal, question mark. Let's say terminal monitor. No, I guess um, I guess it's terminal no monitor. There we go. So terminal no monitor shuts that off. That's an unusual command, isn't it? You put the no after the terminal. So terminal monitor to display those log messages on your screen. Terminal no monitor to turn them off while you're in SSH or Telnet. If you are in console, those messages happen no matter what. Okay, let's move back to looking at the routing table. So we'll do show IP route. In show IP route, we have four loopback interfaces, 10.65.3.0, 10.65.2.0, 10.65.1.0, and 10.65.0.0. Let's go set up some static routes on router 1 so we can reach those four networks. So I'll come back to PuTTY. I will open up router 1. So I'm, I'm still logged into router 1 via my SSH session. Right now, if I try to ping, so let me open a command prompt briefly here, and I try to ping 10.65.0.1, which is one of the IP addresses on my loopback interfaces on router 2, I get a message back from router 1, 192.168.10.1, saying destination host is unreachable. I know I can reach router 2 because I am SSH'd into it right now. What I can't do, though, is I cannot reach IP address 10.65.0.1. So we'll have to create a static route then. So let's create the four static routes for our four entries first, test it to make sure it works. Then we'll add in our summarized route test it again to see what happens, examine the routing table because there's some things I want to show you in there, and then we'll go and remove our four individual static routes and make sure that our one static route actually works. 
So let's add our four static routes in. IP route 10.65.0.0 with a mask of 255.255.255.0 and an next top of 10.65.16.2. Let me show you a trick to adding these four routes in. So what I'm going to do is select, I'm going to select my route statement. And then what I want to do is open up Notepad. So to open up Notepad, I click on the start orb and I type Notepad and click on Notepad. Notepad in Windows is a really, really, really nice basic text editor. And as a network engineer in my career, it's unheard of not to have some type of text editor open while you're working with and configuring routers. Because this is why I'll show you here. We paste our route statement into Notepad. And what I can do then is I can just change the value that I need to for each statement. So we have 10.65.1.0, 10.65.2.0, and 10.65.3.0. The route statements all look the same, right? We have they're, they're going to look exactly like this. So now what I can do is copy my three route statements that I've put into Notepad here, go back to my router, and if you remember right, in PuTTY, to paste, we use the right click of the mouse. So just one right click of the mouse will paste those back into the router. So what I've just done is, look at how quickly I type those, right? I, I, I just created another cheat here. So I can just copy and paste right out of Notepad as long as the command appears exactly as it appears when I type it out. So as long as I'm typing the exact same text in Notepad that I would type in the router, I can just copy and paste. It's a really nifty little utility here. All right, great. Let's take a look at my routing table. Do show IP route. And when I do show IP route, we now see my four static routes here to reach the 10.65 networks that are on my loopback interfaces on router 2. So now let's go back to our command prompt and make sure we can ping. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow to see if I can ping 10.65.0.1. And sure enough, I get replies now from 10.65.0.1. Let's try 10.65.1.1. Outstanding, I get replies from that too. Let's try 2.1. Once again, I get a reply, and I need one more address to ping, which is 10.65.3.1. And that pings as well. This means that our static routes are working correctly. Right, the packet comes into the router, into router 1. When it comes into router 1, it's destined for one of the 10.65 networks, looks up in the routing table, to reach any of the 10.65 networks that are attached to the loopback interfaces, I send it to 10.65.16.2, which is router 2, and then router 2 takes care of it. All right, so let's add in then my static route for my summary. So to do that, I'm going to say IP route 10.65.0.0. This time, though, instead of a 24-bit mask, I need a 22-bit mask. A 22-bit mask is 255.255.252.0. My next top is going to remain the same, 10.65.16.2, and I press Enter. Let's look at my routing table now. If I look at my routing table now, now I have five static routes. I have a static route for the four original ones, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then I have this last one, 10.65.0.0 slash 22. If you notice, there are two routes in this table that have the same exact address. And the only thing that's different is the mask. Which route is used and why? The way the routing table processes routes is quite cool. So the routing table processes routes and it tries to find the best match for the destination address of a packet. So, if we're trying to ping 10.65.0.1, the router we'll choose will be the most specific route to that network. So it's actually going to choose the route with the largest network portion identified. So, 10.65.0.0 slash 24 has a larger network portion than 10.65.0.0 slash 22. Both of these routes match a destination IP address of 10.65.0.1.
Both routes match that. But the route that is chosen will be the route that has the largest number of bits in the network portion, which means that it'll be this first route here with 24 bits in it. All right, so let's, let's verify to make sure I can still ping all four addresses. So we can ping the 3.1 address yet. Means I haven't broken anything. 2.1 can still ping that. 1.1 I can still ping that. And 0 0.1 I can still ping that address as well. So I can ping all four of my addresses. If you notice in the middle there, I, I get impatient when I'm waiting for pings sometimes. I hit Control C to stop the ping from happening. Once I see that I get two replies back from a ping that I'm expecting to get a reply back from, I'll, I'll oftentimes just stop the ping and say, yes, I definitely have a response from there. I'm not worried about other issues at this point. So Control C will stop the ping from occurring. So now let's remove these four routes from our routing table so that those are definitely not used. That the only route we have to our loopback interfaces on router 2 is a single static route. To do that, we're once again going to use Notepad. I'm going to issue the show run command this time because this is all in our running configuration file. And if I hit spacebar a few times, we get down to the point where we can see our routes in our routing table. And I want to eliminate these last four routes here. So I'm going to select them. Once I select them in PuTTY, that's essentially the same as copy. So I can then go to Notepad, give myself some space here, and then do an Edit Paste or a Control V, and that will paste my four networks. Now in order to negate an IP route statement, we simply issue the command no IP route, and then the route statement. So if I want to do this in Notepad, all I do is paste my four route statements. I put no in front of each of them. No and then a space. I select then my four routes, copy them, go back to PuTTY. I need to be in configuration mode in order to modify static routes. So I enter the config prompt, and then all I do is right click, because remember, right click in PuTTY is paste. And I know I'm saying that now, and all of us are so used to cl right clicking to bring up that menu that you're going to mess this up a couple times. This takes a lot of practice before you're used to it. So in PuTTY, we right click to paste. That pastes our route statements in there, which are all no IP route statements. If I exit and then look at my routing table now, by issuing show IP route, I am now down to only one static route for all four networks. Let's see if I can ping. Just hit the up arrow, 65, 10.65.0.1 1 replies. 1.1 1 .1 still replies. 2.1, we're still getting replies from that. And the last one, 3.1, we should get replies from that as well. So that means that our summarized static route is effective at moving traffic from our workstation to those loopback interfaces on router 2 and back again. Let's go take a look at an example where route summarization doesn't work so well.